just a game that Emma Hayes and Chelsea would have dreamt of as they claim their fifth successive title. Celebrations on the field here. Chelsea are champions. Manchester United nil. Chelsea six. What a sensational performance from the team away from home at the Theatre of Dreams. I mean, I couldn't think of a more fitting finale for our last game. Good evening, thank you very much for your company and listening to kick off here on TalkSport. I'm Jason Cunningham, Jermaine Penny. Yes, that was Emma Hayes reflecting on her fifth straight WSL title. And of course, it wasn't that long ago that Emma Hayes conceded the title. Then, all of a sudden, Manchester City conceded two late goals. They were leading the game comfortably. That changed the course. I can't remember the game, but we're going to go and speak to Uma Gurev now. She joins us now to look back on what was an unbelievable, not just day, but last three or four weeks of the season. Uma, good evening. Welcome to the show. Good evening. How are you? I'm very well, Uma. Now, I'm trying to remember because I was at Stamford Bridge on that day. It was a Sunday, I believe. And they Manchester City conceded two late goals. Was it home to Spurs? So, Man City in the WSL, they lost to Arsenal. It was it Arsenal. Arsenal? It was Arsenal, was yeah. it? Third right. place, Arsenal. <laughs> and they, but they conceded something like in the 89th and then the 93rd minute, something ridiculous, which then handed Chelsea, put Chelsea back in with a shell. It did, and Chelsea took that chance with both hands. They then went on later that evening to score eight against the yes, already relegated yes, Bristol City. Completely ruthless performance, but yeah, I think that's the game. That's the day that basically handed mm. them the WSL in the end. Yeah, I mean, how how will they be feeling now, Men City? The fact that they had that title, had one hand on the t- title. Emma Hayes had conceded it; she couldn't see a way back. It's quite a devastating way to lose it because. In the end, they lost on goal difference. And you think about those, those out, because you're absolutely right. What happened was Chelsea played afterwards and that's when Chelsea hammered on that goal difference. It, it, it's almost like a, a death by a thousand cuts. It's horrible. It doesn't feel like they've only won on goal difference. This feels like such a resounding victory for Emma Hayes. Actually, I think it was a bit of an anticlimactic day after what's been such a wonderful, low season all around. Mm. Chelsea just... They just know how to get the job done. They were 2 0 up against Man United, who have just won the FA Cup final inside eight minutes. It's ridiculous. Man United, I think, should feel a bit embarrassed with their performance today. But then again, I suppose they had very little to play for. For me, that the the loss to Arsenal, City lost it there, really, because I think a switch just flipped inside Chelsea's head. And this is what separates winners from challengers. Man City had 31 shots on goal today against Aston Villa. They could have closed the goal difference. But Chelsea only had 13 shots and they converted wow, almost half of wow, those. Wow. So it's that clinical edge. That's the difference right yeah, right there. Some of it's players, yes, but I think so much of that goes down to Emma Hayes. Yeah, I just about to say, obviously, uh, Man City threw it away by losing to Arsenal, but you've got to give the credit to Emma, Emma Hayes and the, the, the Chelsea ladies for, again, you know, eight past Bristol City, uh, six past Man United. That That's, you know, four, 13, 14 goals. So that's what's winning you winning you the league and you know they could have easily gone in them games won 1-0 one, 2-0 one, thinking that City's going to be in the recruiter and driving seat um, and fair, fair credit to them and you know there's a little anecdote that sums up Hayes here and what I think she's about after their 4-3 loss to Liverpool the game that's sort of yes. made her say oh I'm giving up here she kind of conceded but then after their that huge day where everything turned around she turned around and said no actually this wasn't me that kept the faith. This was my team. It was Millie Bright who said, it's not over until it's over. And I think the kind of manager that it takes to inspire that kind of loyalty from a team, is just remarkable. And the way that she's changed the WSL and built this team who are the most successful team in WSL history, whatever your feelings towards Emma Hayes as a person, this is a woman who's never been anything other than bold, unapologetic and Mm -hmm. seriously successful. So and I'm excited to see what she goes on to do in in charge of the US women's national team, although probably not good news for Lionesses fans. No, in, in, indeed. <laughs> and she's been very emotional, Emma, uh, this last week. And we, we saw it again today. I mean, look, she's been a revelation. I mean, she's, I wouldn't say single-handedly, but she's been a massive part in what has moved women's football in the direction that it has. Five consecutive league titles. Um, where Where does... This the, the game go now? How does women's football move on without Emma Hayes? It's quite hard to think, and it's a good thing that she's not leaving the game entirely, but the WSL is losing a huge figure mm-hmm. because it's not just on the pitch that she has changed this game. It's the attention she's paid to women's health, advocating for research into menstrual cycles, her ACL injury treatment, nutrition, 
maternity policies. She's just proved that there's so much more, I think, to football than kind of just like paying attention to what's going on the pitch to really create a successful team. It's this holistic approach that she has. And I don't know whether anyone can really replicate that at the moment right. in the WSL. I think she's also proved that it doesn't matter what gender you are, you can be a successful manager. And I think that managers like Carla Ward, who unfortunately is also leaving Aston Villa, but Remy Allen, who coached in a, um, a championship side, London City Lionesses, those are the kind of managers now who, because of Emma Hayes, mm. are coming up as really successful female managers. And I think that's down to her. So I hope that this continues and that that's the legacy that she leaves behind. Uma, where does it, more importantly, where does it leave Chelsea? Um, wh where's their path? Uh, wh who, who's going to replace Emma? And are they going to be formid formid formidable as, as they were now with, with such a absolute, you know, superb manager leaving, leaving England? Yeah, and it's not just the manager. They're losing super Fran Kirby and Marin Mielder. Mm -hmm. Fran Kirby today scored a nice goal as a, a lovely send-off and she's it's a complete club legend. But it looks as though at the moment we think Current Leon manager Sonia Bompasta is going to take over at Chelsea. That's not been confirmed 100%. But, um, you know, you think, oh, who could possibly come in and replace Emma Hayes? Sonia Bompasta is the only woman ever to have won the Champions League as a manager and as a player. So she's got pretty good credentials to kind of come in and actually do the one thing that Chelsea have never done. You forget, I suppose mm. we forget it because of their success, but they've never won the Champions League. So... I don't know whether this is going to hugely change how successful Chelsea are, whether they need a sort of rebuild a couple of seasons to get them back to that dominance. But actually, we could end up seeing a Chelsea that somehow becomes even more successful under their new manager. Excellent. And then with just one final question here, Emma Hayes moving um, to one of the biggest jobs in, in, in women's football, Amer managing the uh, American national side. How do you think she's going to do? Things? Sorry, could you say that again? Yeah, just Emma Hayes is going over to manage the women's national side in America. It, how do you think she's going to get on? I think she's going to get on really well. Um, she knows what it takes to come into a team that's maybe not at its height, which the US women's national team is not at the moment. Considering the US women's national team history, the dominance they have at the World Cup, which is coming up in a couple of years, and we now know that's going to be in Brazil. She's taking over, actually, statistically, um, the US at the time when they are actually ranked lowest in their entire history. And this is sort of the job that she did at Chelsea. She came in when they weren't this, this, the side that were this dominant, and she built them back up from the ground. And it's, again, that ruthlessness. I remember there was a press conference once where she was speaking and she said, you know, if my players don't perform, I'm just going to replace my players. And I think, you know, it sounds ruthless to us, but if you're trying to build a team mm. that win everything on the world stage, that's the kind of attitude that you need. Indeed. Uma, listen, appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Have a fabulous Thanks weekend. For me. Thank you very much, Uma Gurev. Uh, TalkSports WSL reporter there reflecting on another uh, WSL victory for MAs and Chelsea. Congratulations to them and us. I'll take a bit of credit for that. Uh, by the way, congrats. It's the fifth um, a trophy uh, WSL in a, in, a, in a row. Emma Hayes has won 16 trophies during her time at Chelsea. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.